Hey guys, my name's Adam. Uh, I guess this is the third vlog of the year. Like most of February is gone now, so I, I don't really know where to start, but it's been a bit since I've uh, touched base, but it's not because shit hasn't been happening. It's by any means, it's because time's limited when the punches keep coming, so. I've been working on a new song recently, and I'm really happy with how it's been turning out, although slow. You know, with life and living as a full-time dad, it's hard to get it done, but uh, the last piece of the puzzle has been vocals, but I'm actually going to be postponing recording those vocals for a bit here because I feel like now that I'm learning how to mix and master a bit and find my sound, I think the microphone is really holding back the sound potential. I mean, it's okay for like podcasts and stuff, but not really for professional recording. Now, many years ago, I ran in a local bar circuit playing open mic nights uh, with a band called The Tickles. Uh, it's, it was actually their last name, so it wasn't like they came up. It, it was clever in the sense, I don't know. It, it, they were great people. They were a couple of old heads, and me and the, uh, the couple of my friends that would become the band would follow them around and play on their equipment and jam with them before we had a PA system of our own to play gigs and stuff. So this guy, the lead, the lead guy, Larry, he eventually opened up a music shop in town, which had like random gear coming through it. And whenever I would come through and saw something nice, he would practically give it to me, which was great considering I was broke like most of the time. So that was like 15 years ago was the last time I walked through there and I saw this professional recording microphone. This thing was like five or 600 bucks new, which might as well have been a million dollars to me at the time. It was a Hosa QCM-2 large diaphragm condenser tube microphone. That's a mouthful. And it came in a sweet hard shell suitcase. And Larry sold this thing to me for like 80 bucks or something like that. Uh, whatever I had in my wallet, probably. He was a really nice guy and he probably gave it to me for whatever I had. And was just happy to give it to me. So I remember the first time my drummer and I plugged it in to our PA system. It was like so different from all the cheap dynamic microphones that we were used to using. And like unfortunately it was near the end of the band's duration so we didn't get to use it a whole lot and it wasn't really practical to be lugging it around like it's a studio mic it's not a you know a gig mic. So it kind of sat in my closet for like 15 years the sweet recording microphone and over time, I started piecing together my ragtag home studio here. It's kind of, it is what it is. I got burned out USB ports all over. I got extension cords. It's a mess, but it's, I'm working with what I got. And I'm excited about, you know, my, my big idea was to use that microphone. It, it would be like the heartbeat of my sound here in this studio. But there was one problem. I plugged it in, and this was a while ago when I started doing this doesn't work anymore I didn't know what was wrong with it but I've just been letting it sit there useless for years now so it's kind of been a goal of mine to get it going now I took it to a local repair shop a couple days ago and it's gonna be ready for pickup on Monday apparently the input on the back of it was uh, just detached inside along with the original cable at some point it was it was forced and you know at a band practice or something probably half a lifetime ago I don't know it shorted out the internal fuses on it I had already suspected the cable was wrong like with it so I bought a new one so I already had that but now that everything in inside of the power supply unit is repaired I'm good to go with my new old microphone and I'm excited to see how it sounds after all these years and I hope it's a big improvement over this so that's where I am with music. You know, I have a song to finish here, and as soon as I get that microphone, I'll be moving on, you know, recording the vocals and then moving on to the next song whenever it comes. So moving on to IRL stuff. And the main reason that the content creation like this has been limited, well, here in the state of Michigan, we've had like 
at least a foot of snow for weeks. We have like two foot of snow right now, so it's crazy. And it just keeps coming with the temperatures are in the negatives for like extended periods of time. And I understand there's no excuse for not talking about it here on like a vlog, but something about getting up a couple hours before work to snow blow your way out to the road. So when you get home, you can snow blow again just because so much has fallen while you're at work. I mean, unless, you know, you have a cool wife like mine, she sometimes will snow blow that second time for me. So it's great. She's pretty awesome. Uh, but that shit wears you down. And anybody who is from the Northeast, like, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It makes for hardy people, but it makes for tired people too. So that part sucks for me and everybody else around here right now. And, you know, half the time during these never ending snowstorms, I'm driving a big rig. You know, I'm hauling a big flatbed of whatever industrial equipment needs delivered across the state that day. And it's been pretty bad out there. Usually that's fine. I leave myself the extra room. You know, I take it easy. I don't get in a rush. But last Friday, on my first trip down south on the main interstate, we're only going along about 40 or 45 mile an hour, I would say. But I have like a football field in front of me to the next car. And we come around the bend and there's stopped traffic. I immediately touch the brakes lightly and it just wants the jackknife right away. So I'm like, okay, this is going to take some doing to get it stopped. So over the next uh, several hundred yards, I'd say, I followed, I fought the jackknife, you know, the whole way. I'd apply the brakes and then it would want to jackknife. I'd have to get off to get straight and then apply the brakes again, try to jackknife the other way, let off until I had no room to let off another time to get straight. You know, cars were shooting off into the ditches and stuff to try to not hit everybody. And it was, it was close. I was like probably 50 yards from the next car in front of me. I'm only going like 15 to 20 mile an hour. And I actually complete the jackknife. And, you know, I steered into it as long as I could, but at about 10 mile an hour, it touches, you know, and I stop like 20 feet from the guy in front of me. Nobody's hurt, you know, big fully loaded trailer. All everything was chained down good. You know, it, it, everybody was safe. Everybody was good. I just backed up a little bit and along we went, but a lot of people out there were not as lucky as I was that day. So that was Friday last week, Valentine's Day weekend. So the exhaust on the truck had come around and touched the trailer and it bent enough to pop off of a V band. And so it was leaking exhaust, so it was just loud but, and the fuel tank had a dent in it, but it wasn't leaking. So, it, you know, I was able to drive it the rest of the day and I drove it the next few days until we had time to fix it. You know, it took some fancy driving to drive away from that one, relatively unscathed, minus a little damage to the truck, which my boss being the guy he is, he didn't give a shit about the truck. That's replaceable, I am not. You know, and if you're working for someone who had, you know, come at a situation like that from a different perspective, you need a new job. You know, that's how it should be. Anyways, I fixed the exhaust without needing new parts. You know, we'll probably just get a new fuel tank from a junkyard or just run the dented one for a while. I don't know. But other than that, we're all good. I fixed that the other day. And, you know, of course, near the end of the day on Friday, I had just had to smack the end of my finger, this fingertip right here. <laughs> and it hurt pretty bad. It's bruised pretty good through there. But the problem is that a couple years ago, I had hit this, I forget how, on something else. And I broke the nail bed inside it. And it ended up getting infected and really swollen and painful and needed drain. And it was just gross and just took a while to heal. And now I just smacked that same for freaking finger you know and it hurts to play guitar so I'm hoping it isn't too bruised on the tip but I hope it didn't hurt that nail bed so I, I think it's okay but right now it's just swollen and hopefully it'll be all right as a mechanic you know I swing a hammer exponentially more than a, a normal person would so it's like at some point you're gonna slip and you're gonna hit your finger you know it increases your chances by about a million percent just the fact that you're swinging the hammer in the first place all the time as a mechanic so the next order of business, 
while I was out finishing my day, my wife informs me that the furnace is going out and it's the coldest week of the year and due to the weather, I'm going to be getting home late and all the part stores are closed until Monday. How the hell am I going to keep my family warm the whole weekend? Well, luckily I'm pretty handy. I just so happen to have another blower from another furnace that I keep in the garage. Like I use it for like a huge fan on like the hot summer months when I'm out there working on whatever, you know. But it took some ingenuity, but with the use of some ratchet straps and a block of wood, I was able to keep heat blowing through the house all night so no one froze. We didn't die. The next day, I did find a place that did have a motor, and I kind of had to do a custom job on that as well to get the cage to line up properly and then get it wired in right. But either way, we're all good. The furnace should be good for a long time now. That crisis was averted. So lastly, the whole last weekend, like I said, it was Valentine's Day weekend. I had been heavily contemplating since having to put the dog down a month or so ago about secretly getting a cat for my wife for Valentine's Day. We talked about getting a cat many times, but the dog, he would have just eaten any other pet we would have gotten. So he was an asshole, you know, he just was. We could never have cats. So as much as I wish the dog could be here, he's not. The Valentine's Day weekend thing, I I was planning on meeting some cats at a nearby uh, shelter to see if one would jump out to me and see if it would fit our family well. And I'd already called earlier in the week and I was planning on stopping by on that Friday, the you know, the day of the almost wreck and meet a potential kitty. So that was the actual reason I was late getting home. Well, so late getting home Friday. It, you know, I got off work late, but I did make time to stop by and meet a stray who was named Mochi. Well, her name was something else, but now Mochi. And committed to taking her home on Monday. She was able to be adopted, you know, on Monday. They had to hold her for at least a week. You know, she was going to be perfect for the family. She was so lovey. You know, there was no way this cat wasn't somebody's house cat. Like, she needed a good home, and I wanted to give it to her. So, Uh, But that day, the lady mentioned that there was a sister that came in at the same time, but... She was currently getting fixed, so I didn't have a chance to meet her. I thought, well, good thing, because, you know, I would have taken both, and that'd be crazy, right? You know? But, anyways, I made it through the weekend. I did commit to get the one cat, and with it, I didn't let anybody know. I didn't let the cat out of the bag, so to speak. And I was going to go pick up Mochi Monday after work. However, I did call and ask if the sister was still available because I wanted to see if I could at least meet her and then see if maybe she would, you know, if they'd be better off together. I don't know. It was a, so it was a bold move, I know, to go from currently no pets to two pets right away. So that was kind of, but they said she was still there and she was unclaimed, but people were there and they were looking at cats and they couldn't guarantee that she would be there when I got there, but now I have two cats. <laughs> so I have Biscuit. Biscuit was smaller and she appeared to be the runt of whatever litter these nice kitties were from. But as soon as I opened her cage, she ran up my arm and sat on my shoulder like a parrot. And she just reached around, started nuzzling me through my mask. And I just knew I had to bring her home with Mochi and I. So here we all are. So it turns out it was a great decision. These cats are so people-oriented, so lovey, so cuddly, and yet they'll still chase each other and play and get frisky, and they pretty hardcore go at each other. And then five minutes later, you find them crashed on a blanket together, you know, grooming each other. So they're really great together, and they're exactly what we needed. I actually got home and got them into the laundry room without anyone knowing. I got their food and their litter all set up. I released them. I went around through the main door in the house and I came in and we had dorm- dinner like normal and no one knew. And then after dinner, I took everyone into the laundry room and I filmed it. So enjoy. Where are they? Where are they? What? Where are what? It's okay. You're okay. Where's your 
do? Oh, come on, baby. Oh, good girl. Yes, you good girl. <laughs> Rescued kitties. They're sisters. And they needed a home. So, for the hundred or so of you who watch these, and a few of you who watch till the end, Thank you for watching. It's cool that some people are actually invested in knowing what's been going on lately with me and with my aspirations towards music this year while dealing with all the rest of the world all at the same time. So I hope everything's going well for you. Click all the thingies below and comment to let me know how your 2021 has been treating you. And stay tuned for new music coming at you very soon. See you next time.